Hello everyone, this is Mr. P. On today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to identify worthiness. So let's get started. Clarity and conciseness go together. Writers are concise when they use as few words as needed to be clear and engaging. Worthiness thwarts clarity. Wordy sentences loaded with unnecessary words can tire readers, making them struggle to decipher a writer's meaning. A sentence does not have to be short and straightforward to be concise. Instead, every word in it must count, especially when the subject matter is complex or technical. Worthiness can be a natural byproduct of the early stages of the writing process. To make your writing concise, be aware of the sources of worthiness and know how to counter them. So recognize and eliminate wordy phrases and empty words, recognize and eliminate unnecessary repetition, recognize and revise constructions built around weak verbs and nouns derived from verbs, Recognize opportunities to reduce clauses to clauses and phrases to single words. Recognize opportunities to combine several repetitive sentences into one more concise sentence. So these are some of them. So I'm going to show you how to identify and then edit your work. So let's get started. To make your writing concise, Ask yourself these questions as you edit your writing. Do any sentences contain wordy or empty phrases, such as at this point in time, for example? Do any sentences contain redundancies or other unnecessary repetitions? So we have two examples. The fact is that at this point in time, more women than men attend university, so we can edit the fact is that at this point in time is too wordy, right? So just write more women than men attend university now and add a time expression at the end because you want it to say at this point in time. At this point in time is the same as now. For the second example, we have total university enrollments have increased steadily upward since the 1940s. But since the 1970s, women have enrolled in greater numbers than men have. So instead of writing uh, upward, erase it. Why? Because you have increased. Increased means upward anyway, right? So you don't need it. It's a redundancy, right? Let's go to the second point. Can any clauses be reduced to phrases or phrases to single words? Can any sentences be combined to reduce repetitive information, like in this example? Reports that come from university officials indicate that applications from women exceed those of men. This pattern indicates that women will continue to outnumber men in university for some time to come. So look at that. We have reports that come from university. So university officials is just better, right? Report, instead of indicate, that applications from women exceed those of men. No period here, just comma, indicating that women will continue to unnumber men in university for some time to come you can see that I erased a lot of words that you don't basically need, right? I know it's hard, but with time you will learn how to do this. Next question. Do any sentences included there is, or there are, or it is expressions, weak verbs, or nouns derived from verbs, like in this example? In 1970, there were more than 1.5 million more men in university than women. So instead of writing that, we can just write, in 1970, men outnumber 
women in college by more than 1.5 million, period. In this example, you can see that I raised there were and more men in university than women. That's because I used the verb outnumbered. So outnumbered is a verb and it means more than, right? And so you don't need the rest. Let's look at the second example. This trend is a reflection of broad changes in gender role throughout North American societies. So you can see that is a reflection of there is no need if you use the verb reflect. So this trend reflects broad changes in gender roles throughout North American societies. Over to you. Yes, let's do some practice now. So I will ask you to pause the video and complete the exercise. So when you're finished, you may click play and I will give you the key. Now that you have finished, I will give you the key. Number one, the cliffs drop to the reefs 75 feet below, barely visible through the fog. Their car is gassed up and ready for an all-night drive. Sometimes Stan went running with Blanche, a good athlete on the track team at school. Number four. Taylor brought some strange tasting European candy that wasn't shaped like American candy. Well, people, that's it for today. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. If you liked the lesson, hit on the like button. And if you uh, want to share it, you can share it with your friends. I hope you have a great day and I see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.